Welcome along to another video presentation from SAT Alliance. This is the third in our series focusing on SharePoint document libraries. If you find these videos useful, we'd appreciate a donation towards their continued and improved operation. You can do this via donation.satinalliance.com.au. First thing we need to do is bring up our SharePoint site and go into our document library. In this case, we're looking at a policies document library. Once the document library is loaded, we can look at the more advanced options found under the settings menu. Simply select men settings and then select document library settings. In here, you'll see at the top some information about the document library its relative address and the description that we've given it. Under general settings you see that we can modify the title, description and the navigation options for the document library. So simply we can change its name, its description and whether it appears on the quick launch bar under SharePoint main menu. When we've made the changes that we want simply save or cancel to quit. We can then look at the versioning settings. Each document library has the ability to maintain an independent version or versions of a file. This can be very handy when you're checking documents in and out for review. As you can see at the moment, there's no content approval on this library, so we can select yes. So that means that it, any creation will be saved as a draft until it's approved. At the moment, we've also got no versioning settings on so what we can do is choose between simply major versions or whether to create major and minor versions and we can set a number of additional options down here you can also set the draft security which basically means that who should be able to see the drafts in the document library this can be set to any user only users who edit them or only users who can approve them and the final option is to whether you want to require documents to be checked out before they are edited. Again, once you've made the changes required, simply select OK to save these settings. If we now look under the advanced settings, we'll see that we can allow management of content types. We can determine what our document template is. So this means that when a new document is created directly from the document library, this is the template that is used. So for example, you could have a standard template for policies in this case, and then if you had another document library, you could have a different template. We can choose whether to browse or enable the documents. This simply means whether they open in the client application, provided it's on the local machine, or they display in a web page. We can have a custom destination path to send to, and we can choose whether to display the new folder option and whether to include this document library in the search results. So again, you can create a restricted document library that would not appear in the search results if desired. Make the changes that are necessary and hit the OK button to continue. Under the permissions and management of the document library, you'll see that we can delete this document library, so this will remove the document library as well as any content within it. We can choose to save the document library as a template. This means that we can simply save it as a file, copy that file to another SharePoint installation, and then import and pick up all the settings that we've created here. You'll also notice down the bottom here that we are able to include all the content from the document library as well. So again, this may be a way of creating a document library with all the documents that you required, again, all the standard policy documents for a business, saving it, document library as a template, and including the content so that subsidiaries could import this into their SharePoint and have the documents and the document library ready for use. Make any changes that are required and hit OK or cancel to continue. From here you can also set the permissions for this document library. With SharePoint 2007 it's possible to provide permissions on an item by item level if required. 
At the moment, as we can see, this library inherits permissions from its parent website. This is the default, so it is inheriting permissions from the top website. If we wish to make any changes to this, we go to the actions, pull it down, and we manage the permissions of the parent. And again, if we want, we can copy the permissions and then stop them from inheriting. So at the moment, you'll see that the users of this site are users of this document library are team members, owners and visitors and their permissions are contribute, full control and read. Again if you wanted to set individual security rights for this document library independent of the parent, you can pull down actions and select edit permissions. So for the time being we won't make any changes and return to settings. If you have checkout turned on for this document library, there may come a situation where a checked out document is unable to be checked back in for some reason. You can see that we can take ownership of any checked out file here and, exa and examine the files that are currently checked out to users. We can also set workflow settings on this document library. In this case I've enabled a workflow setting the standard that comes with Windows SharePoint services is three state. So basically what happens is it'll create an, a tasks area for us, a history so we can track each process point in the process of the workflow, and then it looks at the options. So basically we're able to manually start a workflow. The workflow basically follows through a set number of procedures to give a consistent result. When you've made the changes, simply OK or cancel. As you can see we can add an additional workflow if required. The final option up the top here is the RSS settings. This controls the really simple syndication settings for this document library. So again if you have an RSS feeder it is possible to subscribe to this document library and receive the information that can be customized here Saving you, to, saving you from having to go to the document library every time to see any changes or updates. Again, make any changes that are required and select OK or Cancel to continue. The next heading for our settings of the document library are our columns. At the moment we simply have four columns. If we want to, we can create a column which is very much like it was in the document library menu. So again, we can create additional columns here if required. We can add a column from an existing site column. These are columns that have been predefined for the site. We can change the ordering of the columns. So for example, we may wish the name and the title to be organized different. Again, we can just pull this down and change that so that they will appear differently. And we can choose to index columns Indexing columns improves the ability to sort and arrange, but will consume some extra resources in the database. We can choose to index on any one of these fields. Again, OK or Cancel to continue. Down the bottom, we see that we can work with our existing views, and we can create a new view. So if I want to look at the My Submissions view, I simply click on it, and I'll be brought into the area that will allow me to edit the views much as we have shown before. Again, once you've finished, click OK or Cancel to continue. Once we've finished with all the settings for our document library, it's simply a matter of clicking back in the document library to view any changes or updates. This has been another presentation from Satin Alliance. Thank you for watching.